We'll net over $225,000 on this easily, I would think. We didn't pay a dime for this, Dan. Like, that's another thing. We didn't pay a dime for this property. We bought a 69 acre property that had potential for a subdivision. It brought up a lot of discussions in the community. It opened up people's minds to what they can do. Let's just break down that property to start. So that property we're buying for 130 or we bought for $134,000. I never go to an area and subdivide right away if I don't know a realtor, if I don't have a connection like that. This is an area we've done a ton of deals in. I felt very comfortable with the realtor. I knew he could get the job done. I knew he, he had the survey contact as well. The key to all this is getting a good deal on the buy side. Were we buying for 50% of what it's worth? Probably not. It's probably a little more than that, but I think it's worth like 220 to 240 if we sell it as is. And that's why this deal made sense. You always want to talk to the county up front and see what the restrictions are. One thing we talked to the county about is they said under 10 acres, you cannot put a mobile home. So I told my surveyor, like, I want as many lots as possible without going under 10 acres. This is an area where it's not going to sell anytime soon if there's no mobile homes allowed. So we pushed towards that. So we got seven, 10 to 12 acre properties, something like that. We had to make sure that all seven properties make sense and are sellable. That's the thing I see a lot with poorly done subdivisions. One of the most common mistakes people do is they subdivide it up without looking at each one individually. Just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean that there's bad slope or it's wet or there's junk over it, whatever the situation is. You want to make sure each one of those properties is sellable. And I think what really makes it for a good subdivide opportunity is not only the size, but the road frontage. This property has 2,500 feet of road frontage, so we could kind of just slice up vertically along the road, which made it really, really easy easy to do. When you are subdividing, if you do have to make awkward lots, you got to assume those are going to sell a little less than market value. That's things you need to take into account when you're subdividing. You got to think about the end buyer. Always think about the end buyer. And if you do that with these, I think it's they, they work out 10 out, 9 out of 10 times, 10 out of 10 times. Let's talk about the value that we're bringing the not only a seller, the future market as well, because you're able to pay more because you're splitting it up and you're able to make a better return because of that, too, because you're putting in these improvements. The improvements are working in the right direction. They're all working for you and you get exponentially more at the end. And I think that's where a lot of value is. One, you're buying a big lot cash closed to get it fairly quickly for a lot of money. Not only that, you're creating an opportunity on the back end for someone who's been looking for that five acre lot or that 10 acre lot. I just think from a value standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's really, really sustainable from that aspect. There's a ton of value for what we're adding. The seller to us is getting really good cash return. We closed in two weeks. Like that was extremely fast, $135,000 they got. And then obviously we are turning a 70 acre, maybe hunting with a mobile home on it lot to seven primary residences where people can have a state size lots. The end buyers are gonna be getting a solid deal as well, to be 100% honest. Like we're not trying to sell these at 100% of market value. They're gonna get good deals. And obviously it's a win for us as well. Expected completion time to actually list it is a month, but a lot of times that's gonna be longer, just FYI. That just depends, always get those details before purchasing. Size of lots, we have seven 10 acre lots. Listing price for all those is $65,000. Then we have seven times 65,000, which is $455,000 of listing. Let's say we sell it for 0.93% of what it's Minus listed for, which is $5,000. That's $425,000, probably accurate. That gives us $288,000 of profit before any realtor payouts and the investor and all that stuff. We'll net over $225,000 on this easily, I would think. We didn't pay a dime for this, Dan. Like that's another thing. We didn't pay a dime for this property. After we sell three properties off, banks are always paid off first. Banks, investors, whatever. The mortgage is paid off and then everything comes to us. And I'm that's going to be fun. That's, uh, that's always a fun part of it. So. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Like it's just going to be profit coming in. To get these subdivision guys, what do you have to do? You have to go after bigger deals. That's what Ron and I has been preaching. It will pay off, especially with zero risk. All we had to do was get the deal. It, it was a lot of work, but we have an experienced team and we're experienced land investors. It's really not that hard at this point. The process can just kind of repeat itself. And that's, it obviously took us a long time to get here, but that's the fun part of it. The more experience you get, the more things like this you can do and it starts to feel easy for you.